to be here, everybody. And what, like Pastor Lance said, what I'd like to do is to uh, give you an update on what our family is doing, but I'll do that at the end, I think. I'd rather just get right into the scripture. And what I'd like to do then is the following, is to use Hebrews chapter 11 as our outline. As many of you know, it's called the Hall of Faith. The word faith is used 26 times in that one chapter. And the author of Hebrews 11 says, by faith, so-and-so did this, or by faith, so-and-so did that, going back to the pages of the Old Testament to kind of summarize or to encapsulate these awesome accounts of faith for us to use as examples in our walk with God. So what I'd like to do then is just work back and forth for 20 minutes or so. That'll be the message, the Word of God, and the Word of God alone is the message, just working back and forth between Hebrews 11 and the Old Testament, weaving this beautiful tapestry of faith in the living God. Our first example of faith is Enoch. By faith, Enoch was taken, and he was not found. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The faith of Enoch. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man in the likeness of God made him male and female, created he them and blessed them and called the name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he begot Seth were 800 years and he begot sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. And Seth lived after he begot Enosh 807 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. And Enosh lived 90 years and begot Cain. And then Enosh lived after he begot Cain 815 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enosh were 905 years and and Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalil. And Canaan lived after he begot Mahalalil 840 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years. And, and Mahalalil lived 65 years and begot Jared. And Mahalalil lived after he begot Jared 830 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalil were 895 years. And. And Jared lived 162 years, and he begot Enoch. And Jared lived after he begot Enoch 800 years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 962 years. And, and Enoch lived 65 years, and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah. 300 years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch for 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Let's go to our next example of faith from Hebrews 11. Noah, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared to himself an ark for the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. And it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man, beast, creeping thing, fowl of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. 
But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth. And behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But... With thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee, and of every living thing of all flesh. Two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after their kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive, and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee. And for them, thus did Noah, according unto all that God commanded him, so did he. Let's go to our next example of faith. Was it something I said, Pastor Lance? Did you see he just got up and walked out? I don't know. Let's go to our next example of faith. Abraham, by faith, Abraham was tested. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that, in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. And Abraham, he planted a grove in Beersheba, and he called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God, and Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him. Isaac, his son, cut the wood for the burnt offering, and they rose up and went on to the place which God had told them of. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the donkeys, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering, and he laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went on to the place which God had told them of, and Abraham built an altar there. He laid the wood in order, bound Isaac his son, laid him on the altar on the wood, and he stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. 
For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him, a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Let's go to our next example of faith, the faith of the parents of Moses. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. And all the souls which came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and Wax exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. So get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Ptom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And the Egyptians were grieved because of the children of Israel. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service were, and they made them serve, was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake unto the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God. And did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And Pharaoh called the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered before the midwives can come in unto them. Therefore, God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. Now, Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born, you shall cast into the river. But every daughter, you shall save alive. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a beautiful child, she hid him for three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrush and she daubed it with slime and with pitch, and she put the child therein and laid him among the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to see what would be done unto him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself by the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maids to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, take this child away, nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it, and the child grew. 
She brought him onto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. She said, because I drew him out of the water. Let's go to our next example of faith. Two or three more, and we'll be done. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the treasures of Egypt. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out onto his brethren and he looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he was come out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said unto him that did the wrong, why do you hurt your brother? And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. And Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh. He dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs and watered their father's flocks. But the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flocks. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you are come so soon today, my daughters? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered our flocks. And he said, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Ziphrah, his daughter, and she bare him a son. And he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And they came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried. And their cry came up unto God by reason of their bondage. And God heard their groanings. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came unto the mountain of God, even to Oreb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush burnt with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Do not come any closer. Remove the shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them, to bring them up out of that land, unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanite, Hittite, Amorite, Perizzite, Hivite, Jebusite. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have surely seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth thy people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt? And he said, 
Certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the children of Israel out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, When I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me to you. Well, guys, what more shall I say? The time would fail me to tell you of Gideon, Barak, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets who through faith obtained promises. Stop the mouse of lions. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and that the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no occasion or fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these men assembled unto the king and said, O King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors, the princes, the counselors, the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man within 30 days save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the writing, sign the decree that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing, even the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. His windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day, prayed, and gave thanks before his God as he did before time. Well, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication unto his God. Then these men assembled unto the king and said, Hast thou not signed a decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, he should be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said unto the king, That Daniel, which is of the captivity of the children of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree which thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. And he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then said these men, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establishes may be changed. And the king commanded. And they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. And the king spake and said, Thy God whom thou servest continually, may he deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace, passed the night fasting, neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice, and the king spake and said, O oh, Daniel! Servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. 
My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, O king, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then the king was exceedingly glad for Daniel and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den in no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. One more example and we'll be done, guys. Our last example of faith, the last one, the faith of a woman that could raise her child from the dead. Now, Elijah, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according unto my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee eastward, hide thyself by the brook Cherith, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. But it came to pass after a while that the brook had dried up, because there was no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went on to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he said, And bring me a cake that I may eat it. And she said, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And I'm gathering six that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Go, do as I have said. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. So she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And it came to pass after a while that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. His sickness was so sore that there was no spirit left in him. And she said, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And Elijah said unto her, Give me the child. And he took the child, brought him up into his loft where he abode, laid him on the bed, and he stretched himself upon the child three times. And he said, Lord, I pray thee, let the soul of this child come into him again. And God hearkened to the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came into him again. And he brought him down to his mother and said, See, thy son liveth. And she said, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God. And the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. We saw the faith of Enoch. We saw the faith of Noah. We saw the faith of Abraham. We saw the faith of the parents of Moses. We saw the faith of Moses. We saw the faith of Daniel the prophet. And we saw the faith of that widow woman. Seven excellent examples of trust and faith in the same God who does not change us. So, what I want to leave you with today is a question. What are you trusting, having faith in God to do that only God can do? If you're not asking, you're not going to be receiving. It's true. 
What are we asking God to do in faith that only God can do? Amen? Oh, that was a pathetic amen to drive seven hours round trip. Amen? Amen. There we go. Thank you. <laughs>